We may be entering a period where gold will do better and silver would do better. Gold does much better in a low interest rate environment. We don't have that right now, a high interest rate. So the only way I think gold will break through and stay above 2000 if the dollar becomes weak. And the dollar is not going to become weak until interest rates start coming back down. And that will cause the dollar to drop because gold is quoted in dollars. And if the dollar is strong, gold is going to be weak or is it going to be lackluster. So I look at the dollar as a critical element here. Mark Skousen, known for his insights into forecasts and strategies, advocates for portfolio diversification, emphasizing the inclusion of precious metals like gold and silver. According to Skousen, the key to gold surpassing the $2,000 per ounce mark and maintaining that level hinges on a weakened U.S. dollar. He asserts that a decline in the dollar will materialize once interest rates start descending. Recent market developments align with Skousen's perspective. Gold prices experienced a notable uptick, breaching the $2,000 mark in early U.S. trading on November 21st. This surge is attributed to short covering by futures traders and a concurrently weakened U.S. dollar index. Skousen points to the Federal Reserve's role in influencing the dollar's strength and gold's allure. Under Jerome Powell's leadership, the central bank faces the delicate task of navigating elevated inflation, unexpected economic growth, and the need to manage credit conditions. Powell's emphasis on a careful approach underscores the Fed's attempt to balance these factors while anticipating a potential economic slowdown. Interestingly, gold's trajectory since the October 7th attack by Hamas on Israel aligns with Skousen's insights. The precious metal has seen a remarkable 9% increase indicating heightened demand for safe haven assets during geopolitical uncertainty. Join us as we delve into insights shared by Mark Skousen. To stay updated with our latest uploads, subscribe to our channel and activate notifications. Thank you. So it totally depends on the Federal Reserve, but I must admit that 2023 has been much more resilient to a recession. We haven't had a recession uh, so far. So maybe that's because the lockdown... Uh, after the lockdown, the economy came back and is just trying to catch up with the supply chain uh, uh, limitations and scarcities and shortages and that sort of thing. And the market's responding to that. So that could be an element that is going on there. Um, and certainly fiscal policy, the government under the Biden administration has been very stimulative, very aggressive in running deficits and stimulating the economy. The economy may be growing on that, but you can't do that forever. We're headed for a, a fiscal debt crisis at some point, uh, and interest rate, the cost of financing the deficit is rising dramatically with these interest rate hikes. So it's a very dangerous game that is going on right now. So that actually bodes well for gold as an investment. Yes. Gold has hit $200 an ounce like six times and then retreated. And it did it again. It hit $2,000 an ounce, and then it backed off again. Now, it may, at some point, I think it's going to crash through and go, go to new high levels. Uh, but one of the reasons is the Federal Reserve is aggressively raising rates. They're raising rates faster than they have in 20 years. So when you do that, gold doesn't pay any interest. So uh, you're up against uh, interest-bearing investments, dividend-paying stocks that are doing much better in terms of a yield. Gold doesn't pay a yield. So they, uh, gold does much better in a low interest rate environment. We don't have that right now, have a high interest rate. So the only way I think gold will break through and stay above 2000 if the dollar becomes weak. And the dollar's not gonna become weak until interest rates start coming back down. And that will cause the dollar to drop because gold is quoted in dollars. And if the dollar is strong, gold is going to be weak or is it going to be lackluster. So I look at the dollar as a critical element here. Yeah, so I am concerned about um, global instability. Uh, we now have two major wars going on. We could have a third with China and Taiwan. There's really that the spreading of world war could be a serious destabilizing factor in the economy. Again, very positive for gold and defense stocks and things like that. There are always ways to protect yourself in these kinds of environment, but I'm more conservative there. So I would recommend gold itself. And I do in my newsletter forecasts and strategies, I do have a gold position. GLD is the, uh, I, um, uh, I think it's the spider uh, gold shares. GLD is the symbol. And I'm recommending that because 
if you have a stock market crash, everything drops, including gold stocks. So, but gold itself would go up, and that has been the tradition in a crisis. So, to me, a gold is your best position to protect yourself from a, a stock market crash, or at least a major bear market. I'm not calling for a crash per se, because in the U.S. we have circuit breakers that keep a crash from happening dramatically, and we have the uh, plunge protection team, uh, uh, which is uh, the Treasury, the SEC, uh, government officials who are prepared at any time to inject liquidity and to buy uh, quantitative easing and all that sort of thing to turn things around. Skousen's endorsement of precious metals and uranium as investment options align seamlessly with the overarching strategy of capitalizing on commodities during their respective bull markets. He underscores the importance of staying abreast of market conditions and exercising prudence in choosing the opportune moments to enter the market. The Consumer and Producer Price Index reports for October have become rallying points for advocates of a pause in the Federal Reserve's interest rate tightening cycle. The IMF warns that many countries, 10 in severe external debt distress and 26 at high risk, face significant debt challenges. This highlights global economic issues and the need for careful management of debt. Skousen adds that preventing an emerging market debt crisis isn't just about avoiding a more significant financial problem, but also containing a significant recession. He emphasizes potential impacts on the U.S., including a higher deficit and increased national debt if such a crisis occurs. Let's get back to the interview. The best way to tell that is a story like five years ago, I came to this conference when the stock market was in the mother of all bull markets and hitting new highs. And uh, I was extolling the virtues of the stock market. And afterwards, uh, three or four uh, investors came up to me and said, well, we, we've lost 70% of our money. And I said, how's that possible with the market at all-time high? And he said, well, we bought all those penny stocks and gold did not do particularly well. And so the penny stocks fell out of fashion. And so um, I warned, uh, warned people, you, you put too much in that. You know, you might want to speculate with 5% of your portfolio in some penny stocks, uh, but you don't want, you, you want to stay with businesses that work. Uh, and mining is a very tough business. It's a low margin business. Uh, th they don't make a lot of money. A lot of gold, uh, con gold uh, and uh, silver mines lose money every year. So the only way they benefit is from higher gold and silver prices. There's a lot of hope at these conferences. So I, I give a warning signal to people, and I'll be doing that here in my, my major speech here. So it's called the courage to be disliked. Uh, and I'm recommending my own strategy of diversified portfolio and not going overboard with gold and silver. It plays a role. And we may be entering a period where gold will do better and silver would do better. And I think there's a very strong ideology here uh, of uh, gold being uh, representing sound money. Uh, and uh, I've been a part of that in the 1970s. Uh, that was the inflationary 70s. And we went off the gold standard and gold went up to $800 an ounce. So my very first investment was actually a silver dollar rather than stocks and bonds. But when, when Ronald Reagan was reelected or was elected president in 1980, that was a sea change where um, there was an effort to fight inflation. And so stocks and bonds became a more popular vehicle and gold, had, uh, gold has struggled ever since then. And it, so it's more cyclical. So as far as where to invest your money, I've always believed that most of your money should be in the traditional stock and bond markets as long as we maintain basically a free enterprise system. And I think the United States uh, suffers from a lot of problems that have kept the stock market from rising, uh, particularly in, in recent times. But gold and silver do play a role in your portfolio. I believe in a well-diversified portfolio. If you looked at my newsletter forecasts and strategies, I have stocks, I have income investments, dividend paying stocks, I have gold and silver, uh, uranium, I'm recommending that now because that's in a bull market, but, but commodities are cyclical and uh, stocks and bonds are cyclical as well. So you have, to, you have to choose the right time to buy. And I don't think that's gonna happen unless there's an actual financial or monetary crisis and that could happen because the dollar is so strong and most of these 
emerging market debt, for example, is all in U.S. dollars, and they're paying these very high interest rates. And they're not going to be able to pay that off. So I think there's going to be emerging market debt crisis. When that happens, the Fed is going to uh, cut interest rates probably pretty sharply because the fear of contagion that this will spread and create a financial crisis. And the U.S. is in no position to have a, a, a major recession because if we do, that means the deficit is going to balloon even more. The national debt's going to get out of hand. So the Fed doesn't want that, but they may get it nevertheless. The Federal Reserve is not expected to raise interest rates any further. Instead, the markets have been pricing in a series of rate cuts in 2024. This leads to a further decline in the U.S. Treasury bond yields and drags the U.S. dollar to its lowest level since August 31st, which in turn acts as a tailwind for the precious metal. It looks like it's short covering because of the weaker U.S. dollar. And also the fact that it doesn't look like there's going to be any more rate interest rate hikes here coming up on the horizon. So that's bullish for gold, said Bob Haberkorn, senior market strategist at RJO Futures. The dollar fell over a two and a half month low, making gold less expensive for other currency holders. Will the anticipated series of rate cuts in 2024, driven by the Federal Reserve's reluctance to raise interest rates further, continue to exert downward pressure on U.S. Treasury bond yields? and keep the U.S. dollar at its current lower levels, thereby sustaining the positive momentum for precious metals like gold. Share your thoughts in the comment section. If the video resonates with you, join our community by subscribing to our channel and enabling notifications with the bell icon. Thank you for being a part of our community.